Yo, what's up? My name is Rich with Hustle Ninjas. We are back with another video. I had Spencer in the previous vlog when I went to Las Vegas. Spencer, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, hey, what's up, guys? My name is Spencer. Uh, I'm from Las Vegas. Uh, I, I run multiple six and seven figure Etsy stores. Nice. All right, so in that previous video, we saw you did two hundred over $200,000 in a month on an Etsy store. You want to explain what it was? Because I didn't even get into it. Like it was print on demand. It was T-shirts. Um, you know, what were you selling? Yeah. So the the numbers you saw was from our print on demand apparel store. We do uh, women's trendy tees. So basically uh, like mom shirt. <laughs> Most people don't believe it, but it's like mom shirts, uh, back to school shirts, uh, holiday shirts and stuff. Uh, I mean, Rich talks about it all the time um yeah yeah i pretty much call it like a, a general storefront um pretty much like a generic brand but each particular item still dives into a niche it's still so you can kind of bounce around all kinds of different t-shirt designs and uh let's see uh spencer i know you're very transparent so you want to explain a lot of people always ask like what's the profit margin because i know you didn't do too much fulfilling with that it was all print on demand what was like the profit margin on 200 and what was 250,000? Yeah. So if we are talking about just from Etsy fees and, uh, pay and print full without like, without paying my team, it's about 25%. So it's about 22 to 25%, uh, give or take. Cause some items are priced differently. Like, so like t-shirts have different profit margins and sweatshirts and stuff. So it's around there. Are you still able to like maintain those same sales coming into this month? uh august and september are usually the slowest month of the year because everybody's just kind of saving money up for the holidays fall uh uh halloween and christmas so it's a little bit slower these last two months but uh year round yeah we keep it about the same nice all right so let's let's dive into this like from the very beginning so people can get a step-by-step -step idea of how to get to where you are so like step one hopping to etsy when did you get into it and like you know how did you scale it yeah so in 2018 i kind of quit my job i started selling on etsy um the first etsy shop i had was this jewelry i didn't really know what i was doing i just kind of you know you just gotta take a leap you know you gotta start uh i didn't know anything man i like I kind of dabbled in it. Like I sold on like a little bit of eBay and stuff, but like, I really didn't know what I was doing. I, I took bad pictures and all that, but just to get started, that's the most important part. And then you can learn later on. Um, after that, we, we did pretty good with uh, jewelry after like two years, we were selling hip hop jewelry. So after two years, we were doing pretty good. And then uh, I start learning uh watching courses uh learning more on youtube and i found out about print on demand i was like okay let me give it a shot because it's like it's low risk so you can just start if you don't sell you don't have to spend that much money um after that i kind of started understanding like how to make trendy designs doing research uh learning how stores are selling and what designs are selling and then being able to duplicate it and maybe make more. So, uh, was it, what you call it? Like when you're scaling, when you, uh, change, like, let's just say it says future nurse and you can put like different careers and stuff. So you kind of, um, you kind of niche on top of like a nurse shirt itself. Is that what yeah. So like, yeah. So basically if a design is doing well, I would double down on it and just put it into another, like, niche like another career choice or like nurse real estate agent uh a bunch of other stuff got you so like let's say if you had a uh my first day as a teacher t-shirt and that was doing very well you would expand on it and create yeah like like school nurse lawyer, right? yeah our first day as a school nurse or something like that uh the nurse i mean yeah nurse and school teachers are like pretty big a, a really big niche for like evergreens so would you say just like test a few different niches and then see which one causes the most traction and then focus on on those yeah yeah i i would like once you're doing listings you'll see like what sells for you and then you can see 
how can I double down on that by making a different design or using a, uh, the same design, but putting in a different niche. That's the way I would say is the easiest way to grow. So how'd you know there was growth in that? Because I think even after like a first few sales, it's kind of hard to still stick to it all the way up into like where you were at. Yeah. Uh, it's just research too. Like uh, from us, we, I had a graphic designer and I had Lister. So we were pumping out some graphic designs pretty quick. Um, and then we also, what's it called? Uh, we're studying, man. I was studying all the research, like uh, studying all the top stores, like what stores are selling 300 shirts a day, which shirts they were selling. Uh, I mean, it's all about research, seeing what color shirts that sells. Um, you know, trends move fast. So as far as uh, designing itself, like, did you, did you know how to design yourself or you just hired somebody from the very beginning or like, how did that work out? Yeah, I actually didn't have any gra graphic design skills. Um, I seen like your videos on like using Canva and stuff. I, I mean, I could have done it, but I mean, I had a little bit of funding. So I could, I was using like Fiverr, Upwork, hiring some graphic designers, be like, hey, like, per job basis, just starting out. Uh, you don't have to spend too much money. Uh, yeah, you, you'll find, you'll find like graphics. And actually a big thing that people don't know is that you could buy graphic designs on Etsy. Uh, I found that out when I was looking for mock-ups. I was like, man, where are these people getting these nice mock-ups? I, I found mock-ups on Etsy and then like some graphic designs too. So you can buy right. mock-ups and graphic designs on Etsy. Right. I've done that a lot of times. Like back in June, we had like a hot Father's Day shirt. And then like I looked it up and I was like, man, I don't feel like making this. I, I typed in that same design in SVG and it was a f like two bucks or so. And I put it back up and that that single shirt alone gave me a few thousand dollars in sales. So yeah. what would be like the ideal budget for someone who's starting off who does not have any design skills and they need to pretty much farm that out? Dude, I say maybe like 500 bucks. Um, but you have to use it wisely too. You can't just have $500 and then start buying every design you see. And right. like, you know what I mean? You got to do your research. You got to know like what shirts are selling, what color shirts uh, you like to, pro to provide and stuff. So it, I mean, it all really comes back to like learning and educating yourself. Uh, but like, I know some people like kind of take that too much, like they're learning and then they just, don't even start. I say start. And then like, if you, if you can learn, learn, like keep learning about the platform, learning why stuff is selling, why these stores are doing better than everybody else. Right. I, like I always say too, it always starts with the product offer. You have to have the right, right design, the right niche, the right product to even offer before you even start designing design has to look good too but like even if you have the the right pricing you ship it out quick and you even get it ranked if it's not the right product to begin with then everything else doesn't make any sense yeah, and then exactly. i do have to uh shamelessly plug real quick like if you want some like good product research methods and whatnot we have it in the t-shirt seller pro.com group and we also do a monthly coaching call in there. and spencer you'll be on on there this week yeah is that this week <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, no, so I'll Spencer, be there. yeah. Yeah. Spencer's been helping me out with that too. So if you guys have some questions that you individually want to ask Spencer too, he he comes on the, the coaching calls every once in a while. So make sure you check that out. I'll post the link down below. But anyways, let's hop back into it. So we had the product research first, then you get to designing. And then how did you know about fulfilling uh, print on demand? How did you know that was the right option for you? Because a lot of people always shy away from it because they're like, oh, my God, the profit margin sucks. Like, yeah, what yeah. You go for it? well, actually, I when I first started, I I was buying I, my friend had a DTG machine. So I I bought it from him or I basically borrowed it from him. I didn't give him no money because he wasn't using it. So I was like, hey, man, can I use it? I started fulfilling these shirts. I was like, oh, yeah, I could do this. I could do this. Uh, you know, when you get to like 10 shirts, 15 shirts, that's cool. But once you get to like 30, 40, 50 shirts, and then you got to pre-treat uh, the shirts because you have to pre-treat any shirt that's not white, basically, to pray mm -hmm. on. And that just, it's double the time. Um, after that, dude, yeah. So in holiday season, like during Halloween, like everything was just going crazy. We we're doing like 50 shirts 
a month. I mean, 50 shirts a day. <laughs> and I mean, it's like, it's, it's doable, but it's like, dude, it's a lot of work. And especially if you're like doing it from your house, it's just, there's a lot of space and like all that. And that inventory too. So we offered like eight shirts at the time, six colors. I mean, uh, eight colors. And then was it like five sizes? So mm -hmm. you got to think that that's a lot of inventory. I didn't really have an inventory system because you can't, because on Etsy, you would put your quantity, but I mean, they're just blanks. So it doesn't right. really like track it. So I didn't really have an inventory system or anything. So like once it gets busier and once you get to a bigger volume, it's hard to keep track of like um, how much inventory you have. And then when you're trying to order, it's just like you order too much and all that. So after that, I started realizing I was losing a lot of money just by fulfilling because it was just taking up so much time. I couldn't focus on like making more designs and stuff. That's when I uh, hit up Printful. I use Printful. Uh, so I got like a, they have special pricing. Once you hit like a certain amount of like volume, you can hit them up and they'll give you special pricing. So I hit them up. They gave me a pretty good price. I just, they helped me transfer everything to Printful. Um, they're a big help. Uh, I know a lot of people use Printify too. They're really good to start with too. Okay. So production and fulfillment. I'm not anti-production, but at the same time, I think a lot of people get caught up in it because like, you know, the profit margins are, well, what's the direct to garment printer did you have? Uh, the Epson F2100, the shirt color. Uh, yeah, how, how many, uh, how many t-shirts were you pumping out per hour? Dude, okay, I'm, I'm I'm a little slow, so like maybe like, maybe like 15. <laughs> 15? I, I, I that's still, that's still pretty good for that. I, I was pretty slow. <laughs> that's still pretty solid. But see, like the thing about production is that you get stuck up in this like hamster wheel of like, man, I'm saving profit margin after profit margin. But after a certain while, it's hard to scale because you're not even focusing on sales anymore. Exactly. So sometimes that, that profit margin can be nice, but you, you got to remember that you're, you're pushing yourself back from getting more sales, especially if that's your expertise and you was able to get those sales to begin with, then it, it might be something that you, you want to use print on demand. At the same time, whenever you do print on demand, you can always be like, yo, this, this shirt right here is selling like 200 times a day or something. You can take that back and turn into transfers or get a screen printer and get the profit margin back. So I think a lot of times people need to look at print on demand as like, uh, like a way to scale their business. Yeah. I mean, I even thought about it backwards so you can start getting all the volume up do print on demand, sir, your profit margins less. But after now, you know that you're doing a hundred shirts a day. Now you could be like, okay, what equipment can I buy? And what can I like, now you can hire someone like a hundred shirts a day. You could definitely hire someone to do all that and all buy right. the equipment. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, all right. So you got yeah. the pro the product offer, the right product, and then you got into the design. And you got fulfillment options, and then you got pretty much from there you had to nurture the customer and and pretty much learn how to scale it. How were you able to get like return sales? Or are you always focusing on something new? uh for us we do get return sales because we just have good customer service we always try to answer like right away uh especially if you're working with a print provider like the quality is always pretty good like uh with printful like if something's messed up there's a hole the print's not right or something like that they always ship it out and uh you know do a replacement shipping as soon as possible so our customer service is i try to keep it really good just so people can just come back and shop again uh other than that we print out new designs so like new designs you can do new like search terms new seos so the more designs you have the more chances people are going to see you uh i see people like hey man i have like 10 listings I, i'm not getting any views dude like there's people with thousands of listings that's mm -hmm. how you you know you got it takes time to like build it up um and the other thing that people don't understand is like etsy you can just if you have one good listing that can take off, you can make thousands of dollars, just like you were saying earlier. Uh, one shirt can make a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. So for me, it's always been about volume in terms of listing. Like, you know, like say I list up 10 shirts and like nine of them does not do well. That that one shirt can make up for that the other nine listings that failed. All right. So we have all that now. 
Well, what do you think is like the best tips for somebody who who's starting off and they just want to see maybe like a few thousand dollars of sales a month? First, uh, to get to a, th a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, the first step would be starting, uh, just getting some designs up, uh, even taking your course, dude. You, how much is your course? Twenty dollars a month. <laughs> yeah, dude. I know. I'm see. Like this is yeah. Serious, though, like, <laughs> dude, you can get all like most of the basic info. Like you know, just to start out, like twenty bucks, yeah. everything in one place instead. Because you have to think about it, right? If you have twenty dollars to spend, that's a good idea. Because instead of searching like YouTube, like yeah, there's mm -hmm. people like that do like Etsy videos, but you gotta have to like piece together everything. Does that make right. sense? It yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand about courses is that, yes, you can find the same information like on YouTube, but it's going to be pretty much scattered and then you can overwhelm yourself. And then it, it's not a direct guide for you to to click publish and like list something. Instead, mm -hmm. you can have like a direct outline and not get distracted and then already have something published. And then you can come back and see what you did wrong and keep on going forward. Yeah, exactly. It's it's easier to follow one person than multiple people because multiple people will have different experiences and different uh, blueprints. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I, I like, what I like to do is I will stick to one person, like one, like you know, one thing, and then like once you get to like a certain level, you'll understand like, hey, this is, ain't working out, or this could be improved on, and then you watch someone else. But if you watch like five different people, you are just gonna get like par like you you're gonna like. You don't know what to do you get what i'm saying like if mm. someone says you should do this and then the other person say you do this and then you just end up not doing anything yeah that's, that's true it'll be easier to listen to someone and then get it figure from, out yeah yeah figure it out from there and then once you find like some weaknesses and like say fulfillment or something you can come back and find somebody else who's better in fulfillment and then fix that problem it, yeah exactly i mean you know we both are in like different coaching like even me like i do like i have a coach that's Five thousand dollars. It's a mentorship uh, for Shopify. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't master Shopify. I know. I would say I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty good at Etsy, but like <laughs> other stuff, I'm still learning. Like it's always a learning curve. Right. Yeah. I, 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 it's very much true. I mean, like, cause it, that's the same way I met Spencer. I took on Spencer's coaching uh, last month when I did the vlogging video. So you know, it's never too late to to learn like new new strategies to do things. But yeah, like even even knowing what I knew and then taking you on and then it was just like a whole different strategy. So if I knew you from the very beginning, it would have been like kind of intimidating instead of me yeah. going along my path and then I right, see how I can integrate this with my own systems. Yeah. All no. right, Spencer, you want to plug anything in? Yeah, y'all can follow me on my Instagram. Uh, <laughs> it's uh Spencer WLV underscore for on Instagram. That's the only social media I got right now. I might do some content on YouTube soon. Um, yeah. yeah. We're, we're making Spencer give us his valuable information. He's been private. I know. All right. So uh, make sure y'all comment, like, subscribe, check out tshirtsellerpro.com because Spencer's going to be in there. Y'all probably have some better questions than I do for him. And uh, appreciate you, Spencer, for hopping on. Oh, no problem, man. Anytime, man. All right, we'll see y'all next time. All right, later, y'all.